Blog Talk Radio. He says this, she says that. All these voices talking about the culture, politics, current events, and all this other important stuff they peddle us on a day-to-day basis. What is true? What really matters? Hi, I'm Ben Umnis, and this is The Christian Perspective. You're listening to TCP Radio with Ben Umnis, and this is Ben, host of The Christian Perspective radio program, which is what the TCP in TCP Radio stands for. And today is going to be a very huge show, just because there's a lot that's going to be talked about Uh, I'm going to be having the privilege of uh, having Pastor Carl Gallups on my show once again. Uh, He is a friend of the show as well as he also is the pastor of the uh, Hickory Hammock Church in Florida and uh, one of the members of the uh, P.P. Simmons Christian YouTube Ministry. And uh, he and I are going to be discussing today about, uh, well, various things, but in short, uh, various reasons why President Barack Obama should be impeached. And uh, one thing we're going to be going over is this uh, recent Joe Arpaio investigation, as well as uh, other offenses the uh, president has committed. Uh, before I put Carl in the air, though, I just want to let new listeners know that uh, Pastor Carl Gallups has uh, multiple websites, one being uh, newly launched in, in, uh, the, in the winter, uh, carlgallops.com. There you can find uh, information about Pastor Carl as well as his uh, show Freedom Fridays and a special archive called the Obama Fraud Archive, which shows sources multiple articles and uh, bits of information of uh, things Obama has done. Uh, as well as, of course, the P.P. Simmons Ministries website is uh, youtube.com slash P.P. Simmons and uh, P.P. Simmons.com. And without further ado, I will be having uh, Pastor Carl joining us live on the air this morning. Carl, thank you once again for agreeing to be on the show today. I love having you. Oh, thank you, Ben. It's my honor to be with you. God bless you. Now, this the, the, the last two times I had you on, we talked about Halloween, and then we talked about uh, Jesus' birth date. But this topic is going to be a little different in regard to the fact that we're going to be discussing uh, something political and something uh, religious at the same time. Um, for those who have no idea what this Joe Arpaio investigation is, if you could, please uh, tell my listeners, you know, just what this investigation was, what was involved, and uh, why do you feel the mainstream media is refusing to cover this? Okay, yeah, I'll give you a five-minute sweeping overview of the whole thing, and that is um, ever since Obama has been in office, there has been a shroud of secrecy over his identifying documents. Uh, That shroud, Ben, I want to remind your audience, started with Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton is the original so-called birther. During the campaign, when she was the front-runner and Obama was closing in on her, uh, she's the one that uh, I saw her live. I was in a motel room in Orlando, Florida, getting ready to preach at a Bible conference when uh, on Fox News she announced that she had information that she would be releasing in the next four days that would absolutely destroy Barack Obama's presidency, and it went to his eligibility. Uh, When she said that, I I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that somebody running for office actually would say that, and I called um, several important people and had them tune in and to hear it and see it for themselves. A lot of people are not aware of that, and so what happened, of course, within four or five days, we were all waiting and nothing was ever said, nothing was said. Barack Obama pulls ahead in the polls. The next thing you know, she's having secret meetings with him. The next thing you know, uh, she's cut a deal to be Secretary of State when he goes in office. All of his records are locked down. $1.7 million he spends, uh, seals everything, uh, identifying documents of his life. So for the last three years, people have been asking, show us the birth certificate. Show us your school records. Show us your identifying documents. Uh, We were labeled by the Obama supporters as birthers. Um, I wear that label proudly, Ben. All that means is I'm a patriot. I love our constitutional republic. I believe the Constitution ought to actually be followed, and I don't believe that there's anything crazy about a a citizen asking the man in the White House who's the commander-in-chief with a finger on the red button to prove that he's actually eligible to hold that office. Uh, He has never done so. Uh, The Congressional Research Service, the official investigation arm of Congress, 
has said so in an official publication that Barack Obama was never vetted. No one has ever seen his identifying documents. Um, I've got a video on that that went viral. It's on P.P. Simmons. And so, Ben, over the last three years, there's been this back and forth through the press and through those of us who've been out front uh, demanding uh, to see identifying documents. And it all came to a head when uh, Dr. Jerome Corsi was just getting ready to release his book last April entitled Where's the Birth Certificate, wherein he took several months and traveled to Kenya and Hawaii with a team of investigators. They uncovered all manner of unbelievable information about his past, put it in a book. Barack Obama and the White House panicked, and two days before the book was released, by the way, the book went to number one on Amazon before it was ever released. Uh, people were pre-ordering it. And two days before the book was released, Obama stands before the nation, dangling a, quote, long-form birth certificate in the face of the nation, saying, okay, you idiots, here's my birth certificate. Now, several things interesting about that, Ben. First of all, for the two and a half years prior to that, Obama and the White House, Robert Gibbs, etc., had been telling those of us who had been asking for his birth certificate that a long-form birth certificate did not exist, that weren't we smart enough to know that Hawaii no longer produced those? We were stupid for even asking. How ignorant could we be not to know that? Uh, the other thing is, well, then, of course, two days before the book's released, he magically comes up with a document that they swore for two and a half years they didn't have. Now, let's just assume that the document is um, a legitimate document, which our PIO's investigation shows that it's not. But even if it is, the document he proffered to the nation, Ben, clearly says that at the time of his birth, his father, uh, Barack Obama Sr., was a citizen of Kenya. And we know, as a matter of fact, that Barack Obama Sr. never did become a citizen of the United States. Of course, the Constitution requires that the president be natural born. The definition of natural born has proven out many, many times to be someone who is born on American soil or territory and whose parents both are citizens at the time of the birth. So even if the certificate were legitimate, uh, we still have the issue of natural born. He's not qualified for the office. But the striking thing that came to a head, Ben, was just a, uh, two weeks ago, Sheriff Joe Arpaio released the results of his six-month criminal investigation, uh, which was done by a six-person panel of three attorneys and three criminal investigators who also used forensic laboratories and digital document experts, all under sworn criminal investigation and affidavits. The result of his six-month investigation was, in his words, 100% conclusive that the birth certificate that Obama held up before the nation is a forgery. It is fraudulent. Now, Ben, that is huge. That's the biggest story in American history, that a man would be in the White House commanding our troops, finger on the red button, signing treaties with foreign nations on our behalf, who is there by fraud and deceit and by forged documents. Hillary Clinton tried to tell us uh, so there's where we are. And uh, in the meantime, uh, WND.com is covering it. P.P. Simmons is covering it. Those are two huge voices. I'm covering it. I've been on probably 400 to 500 different stations through syndicated radio in the last week or two from coast to coast. Dr. Jerome Corsi is covering it. He's going to be on my show tomorrow. I mean, there are a lot of us out there who have large audiences who are trying to quickly inform the public because the mainstream media refuses to touch it. The biggest story in the history of America regarding fraud and forgery from the White House and the media is refusing to cover it. This is bigger than Watergate. It's bigger than Monica Lewinsky. Those, both of those look like a romper room compared to this. And we're, we're in a constitutional crisis right now. Most of the country doesn't know it, Ben. Yeah, I... Uh... I listened to uh, one of your interviews that uh, you were referring to. I believe your name was Joyce. And uh, when I first heard that you said that uh, Hillary Clinton was the original birther, I was, I was shocked. And what's even more disturbing about this whole thing is just how much corruption that is involved in this. And that doesn't seem like a lot of people seem to care, unfortunately. It, 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 it's a constitutional travesty. Well, well, Ben, the complicity in this is astounding. Uh, the media, obviously, is complicit. Well, let's just say, first of all, let me just say this. 
I spent 10 years as a Florida law enforcement. I've been 30 years in the ministry, and I'm also a Christian uh, uh, media personality, as you know, in many ways, radio, publications, P.P. Simmons, etc. Millions of people around the world know my voice. So, I mean, I, I, I've been involved in this at, a, at an international level up to my eyeballs for three years, so I am an expert in this topic. And let, let, let me just say this. Uh, the complicity in this is astounding. Because not only would Hillary Clinton be complicit, not only would the media be complicit, but Congress would be complicit. They have failed to do their constitutional responsibility of, of checking out the claims. I mean, listen, and just to prove to you that Congress has this responsibility and can do it, remember they held hearings, Senate hearings on John McCain's eligibility. I mean, they had complete hearings, and, and, and uh, Obama and Hillary Clinton sat on those hearings. So, I mean, that proves my point that the Senate knows, Congress knows they are responsible for this. Uh, the Supreme Court may be complicit in it, in that they have refused to hear any arguments on this case. It has never been heard on its merits in the Supreme Court. That's all Joe Opio did was take it on its merits and did a criminal investigation. He did what Congress should have done. He did what the court should have done. He did what uh, the news media should have done. Uh, so the complicity in this runs very, very deep. But let me tell you somebody else who's complicit. Let's pretend like there, there are only two possibilities with Barack Obama himself. It could be that he's entirely legal, he's entirely innocent, that, that he asked for his birth certificate to be given to him so he could show it to the public, thinking full well he had one, and somebody played an evil trick on him or somebody sabotaged him, by forging a document, handing it to him, knowing he would be caught. Now, that's a, that's a far-fetched scenario, but that is a scenario wherein he could be innocent. Now, short of something like that, the only other possibility is, is he knew full well he did not have an American birth certificate. He knew full well that the one he was holding up was forged. And if that's the case, then he's committed treason. And, and, and I mean, he's committed felonies and federal offenses, and possibly treason, which would mean that he would have known that he was not eligible to command our military forces. He was not eligible to control our nuclear weapons. He was not eligible to uh, be the chief CEO over our economy. He was not eligible to sign treaties with other foreign countries. But he gained that office through fraud and deceit. And Ben, that, that's treasonous. I mean, of the highest order. This is what I'm saying. This is possibly the biggest scandal in the history of America, and, and, and the mainstream media is ignoring it. And I think a part of the reason is because they are complicit. Secondly, WND.com just published an article. And by the way, I've got all of this archived at CarlGallus.com, so you don't have to run around to all these different sites to find it. You can go to one place, CarlGallus.com, the Obama Fraud Archives. But anyway, just a few days ago, WND.com reported through Mike uh, Zulo, who's the chief investigator in the Arpaio case, that mainstream media people have revealed to Mike Zulo in the course of the official investigation that one of the reasons they're not reporting it is they have been threatened by federal officials. And some of these mainstream media men have quit their jobs in fear of their families' lives. Now, now, Ben, that's Soviet Russia-style stuff. So, I mean, we're, we're on the cusp of losing our constitutional republic. And, and while I'm revealing this, you actually have some listeners who are laughing, calling me a crazy birther. But when they wake up and our republic is gone, First and Second Amendments are gone, and America is gone, then they will know that I was right. But it will be way too late. If we don't do something to turn this around now, Ben, we're, we're, we're gone. In just, just, a full, just a few years, we, the Constitutional Republic of the United States of America will be gone. You know what I find is a hypocrisy about all this, though? Um, if George W. Bush, let's say he was born in Australia and was basically doing the same thing that uh, Mr. Obama has been doing, I swear the, the, the media would want him crucified practically. I, well, listen, I just ben, they just about crucified him over his flight records with the National Guard. Yeah, I, um, it's just ridiculous, the hypocrisy as well as the uh, massive 
illegal activities happening. You know, they have the nerve to call anybody who questions this uh, birther thing to be a racist, and it's just horrible, horrible attitude to have about people. I, I, I hate it. Yeah, well, race has nothing to do with this, nothing to do with it, not not with legitimate people such as myself, and, and I am legitimate. I'm a legitimate patriot, a legitimate investigator, and uh, uh, r race has nothing to do with it. I mean, uh, y you know, there are many of us out there that, that want Obama out who were uh, touting, uh, you know, Colonel Allen West for president or Herman Cain or Allen Keys. I mean, I, you, know, you know, Condoleezza Rice. I mean, I've heard all sorts of very conservative white people say that they would love for any of those to be president. This has nothing to do with the color of Obama's skin. Um, what it has to do with are, is his uh, philosophical uh, underpinning, uh, his foundation, uh, and, and his complete disdain for the Constitution of the United States and for the history of the United States, uh, and for the fact that he may be the, a, a foreign national usurper invader in the White House. He may be a treasonous uh, president, and that's what it has to do with. Let's, you know, uh, let's let's say for, hypothetically that you know we're wrong and that Barack Obama is indeed a eligible president. The fact of the matter is, unfortunately, he has committed other offenses in which he ought to be impeached for those as well. One I can think of off the top of my head is the NDAA. What are your thoughts on that? Well, listen, this administration has been one constitutional travesty after another, Ben. The NDAA is a good example. Uh, the invasion, bombing, and destruction of Libya is, is another example. In fact, I can go into great detail on that to show you the utter hypocrisy of that. Uh, the, the recent comments by Panetta, you know, that he and the president look to foreign, for foreign permission before they, you know, go to war. Uh, the, the entire um, Obamacare, I mean, a lot of that's still before federal courts for being unconstitutional. Uh, you know, we got to read it before we know what's in it kind of mentality. Uh, the seizing of American corporations, uh, unconstitutional. The seizing of the American banking system, unconstitutional. I mean, it has been one constitutional travesty after another, either direct constitutional violations or the bending of the Constitution so far that it makes a mockery of it. Uh, I've got a, a an audio clip of Obama saying uh, the Constitution is outdated, that it's, uh, you know, an, 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 uh, uh, a document that uh, no longer serves its purpose, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, the, the, these clips are all over the Internet. So we know where the man stands. He, he hates the America that you and I love. And he thumbs his nose at the Constitution. He thumbs his nose at Congress. He thumbs his nose at the American people. And... Uh, and, and so you're right. The NDAA is one example, but what do I feel about it? I, I, I think that the impeachment proceedings that have, have um, been suggested, I think, I think they're a day late and a dollar short. I think this should have happened a long time ago. But bigger than any of those issues is the fact that, well, the reason he's attacking the Constitution, it appears now, according to Sheriff Arpaio's investigation, now we know the reason. He's, uh, he's an usurper to the, to the office. He's there illegally. He's got an agenda. He's doing it on purpose. It appears to me. That's my opinion. Seems evident to me as well. And uh, it just sometimes makes me want to pull out my hair in hearing uh, people not care or just be blind to the truth. Like uh, um, I mentioned to somebody I knew, for an example, about the whole NDAA thing, and they refused to even talk about it. And I'm like, well, that basically shreds the Fourth Amendment. How can you not care about this, and how can you not care about stories like Fast and Furious? I don't know what's more disturbing to me, the, the, the fact that Obama's done all this or the fact that there's so many people who are willing to be ignorant and resistant to the truth. Right. Well, it is frustrating, Ben, but don't give up. I mean, you know, you and I are on the front lines now. Um, you know, we're kind of like the founding fathers of old. They were on the front lines, and the vast majority of the colonists did not want to support the revolution. The vast majority of the people were quite happy to live under the auspices of the crown of England. But because of the bravery of uh, the minority and, and the founding fathers, uh, with pitchforks and muskets, they overcame the most powerful nation on the face of the earth. And with the hand of God and the blessings of God, 
and they gave us over 200 years of freedom and the, and the, and the most unique and the mightiest nation uh, that the earth has ever seen. And so now we're on the cusp of losing it all, and it's up to uh, men like you and me and others of us, men and women, who love this country, uh, many of us who love God, who love his word, who understand our Judeo-Christian heritage and foundation, and who understand that if America's gone, then the light is turned out in the world. If America, as we know it, is gone tomorrow, then this world is going to be plunged into darkness. And um, unless we're in the very, very last days, um, you know, and, and the rapture of the church is, is right around the corner, and many believe it is, but if that's not so, then, then we've got to fight to keep this if we're going to have any kind of freedom to take the gospel to the world. And uh, that, that's where we are. We're on the cusp of losing it all right now. Yeah, there's multiple story reminders that I read on a day-to-day -day basis about that kind of stuff. Like, uh, I do check out various WorldNet Daily articles as well as uh, your videos, of course. And it's disturbing, but at the same time, you know, we, we do still have that hope in Jesus as well as you, well, you know, you, you put it so well. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you, Ben. Well, the balance to it is this. Um, I, I, of course, am, am, a, am a, um, a biblical Christian. In other words, the Bible is my foundation. I'm a born-again believer in Jesus Christ. So I come from a biblical worldview, and I'm unashamed to say so. So I do understand, and I do know and do believe that there is coming a point in history, perhaps in our lifetime, uh, where, where things like this will happen worldwide, uh, kingdoms will collapse, and eventually there will be the rise of the Antichrist. Of course, somewhere in there, and people have various opinions on when it is, but there will be a rapture of, of God's people, and, and the world will be plunged into darkness. And, and that day is coming according to the Word of God. Now, the balance I have on that is, is this, that we don't know the exact day or the hour. We can see the seasons. Listen, we know we live in prophetic times. I mean, Israel's back in the land. Uh, that's a sign of the end times. The, the gospel is going unto all the nations. Uh, that's a sign unto the end times. Jesus said that himself. Uh, we, you know, uh, uh, Persia, uh, Iran, Iraq, uh, uh, Syria, Lebanon, uh, Egypt, Libya, uh, Russia, China. I mean, all of these nations are beginning to align themselves and uh, with, with, with their sights set on Israel primarily and the United States as well. These are all biblical prophecies and signs of the times. So we live in very prophetic times, and, and I'm aware of that. Uh, but uh, short of knowing the day of the rapture and short of knowing how many years we are away from uh, the return of the Lord, um, I also have a responsibility as a, as a citizen of the United States to protect that which God has given us and blessed us with. And I realize that, uh, that like no other nation of the world, uh, the gospel goes hand in hand with our freedoms of the United States. The United States... Um, is, is very, very responsible for the establishment and the protection of Israel uh, for a 2,500-year-old prophecy. I mean, God has used us. The United States is responsible for the dissemination of most of the gospel message throughout the world, most of the missionary efforts, most of the disaster relief, most of the benevolence uh, 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 spending and, and relief. All of that comes from the United States, Ben. And if it's allowed to go away and we just become a banana republic and throw our Constitution and our freedoms away, then we will seriously hamper the gospel and missions and benevolence around the world. It'll, it'll, it'll be gone. And uh, so I balance it with knowing that the Lord is coming, knowing that we might be living in the very last days, but also knowing that I have responsibilities until or unless the Lord intervenes to try to protect the freedoms that I have. And that's the way that I balance it. I feel that is definitely a very strong duty of a Christian to do. And um, one thing that I've heard starting to be popularized, unfortunately, is uh, uh, some churches have this uh, misinterpretation of Romans 13, in which they say that, oh, a Christian can't question the government. They just need to uh, accept every policy that the government has. And, um, obviously, that's not the case. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not only is that a misinterpretation, but it's a complete perversion of the context of the scripture. First of all, that was written two thousand years.
years ago in the Roman Empire to Christians who were trying to to come up with, um, uh, you know, is our responsibility to overthrow the Roman government? Or, you know, what is our responsibility as Christians in a, in a, in a, in a culture, uh, in a Roman culture? And, and Paul's answer was, look, live at peace as much as it is possible with you. Uh, pray for your officials. Pray for your government. Pray for those that lead you. Also recognize that, that government of some form is better than government of no form because, you know, just, I mean, even, I mean, just if there was no government in the United States, we'd have complete anarchy. So, I mean, even a socialist communist government is better than no government <laughs> is what the scripture is basically saying. And then, of course, Jesus gave us the ultimate principle, render unto Caesar's what is Caesar's, but unto God what is God's. So Romans 13 does not tell us to put our brains on a shelf. It does not tell us to put our loyalty to Jesus Christ and his kingdom on a shelf. It does not tell us to roll over and play dead and let the government do whatever it wants to you. What it says is that the general lifestyle of a Christian, where regardless of where they live, uh, it should be that of, of, of being as peaceful as possible and uh, praying for the times around them and, and the government officials around them, recognizing that government itself is an um, uh, institution of God. Now, but one of the differences is we live 2,000 years later in the United States of America. Now, the principles and precepts of God's Word always apply. I mean, God's Word never goes out of style. But the difference is we live in a constitutional republic that was founded on Judeo-Christian principles for the purpose of being able to freely and openly declare the gospel to the world. I mean, that's a, that's a complete 180-degree opposite of, of the Roman Empire of 2,000 years ago. So we have a responsibility to protect that which God has given us. And so there's the difference. So for people to take Romans 13 and tell an American Christian that we should not be involved in political things, that we should just do whatever the government wants us to do, is a complete perversion of that scripture. Would you not agree, Ben? Yes, I do strongly agree with that. And it's very unfortunate and shocking that there are people out there who actually uh, – believe that misinterpretation unfortunately uh but unfortunately that's all the time that i got with you today i'm very happy to have uh been able to discuss this with you and uh bring some uh, new information to uh, my listeners i think it's uh great that uh you know there's people like you that are uh, uh having the journalistic integrity to look at the facts and uh, uh very happy to have you once again carl Thank you, Ben. It has been my honor. God bless you. Thank you for asking me these questions and letting me speak. Uh, perhaps I can come on again sometime in the future and we continue this conversation. But it's been my honor to be with you today. God bless you. God bless you, Pastor Carl. Thank you, Ben. That was Pastor Carl Gallus of the P.P. Uh, Simmons Ministry. He also has his own show, Freedom Fridays. Uh, as he mentioned, he's going to be having Dr. Jerome Corzai on his show, uh, a man who I feel is a uh, very good journalist. I've uh, read some of his articles before on World Net Daily. Uh, like I said, if you are interested in learning more about Pastor Carl Gallup, he has his own website, uh, carlgallup.com, as well as uh, uh, the P.P. Simmons Ministry, of course, is uh, ppsimmons.com.